I recently demonstrated a brand new setup for the Empass Light using the addition of this simple wire 60 feet long called the LZ Sloper. It's a lazy sloper and you'll understand why as we begin to unwrap how this gets set up and how you use it. Hey everyone, I'm Bob, amateur radio call sign Kilo, Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. I like to focus on antenna setup in the HOA, Homeowners Association Stealth. I like to show everyone you can still operate even if you're in a restricted environment. And by the way, aren't we all restricted when we work in MCOM, out in the field, POTA, SOTA? We're always trying to adapt to our circumstances. I also like to do reviews of really good gear, and that's what we're talking about today. Day. This MPAS light starts like any other MPAS light set up with the Cha Hybrid Micro or Mini. If you've added the puck to your kit, well then that's also just something that's real easy to help with setting up ground radials. Put it into the spike. If you live in Central Florida like me, it's possible you can just put your spike into the ground. Otherwise, you already know what to do with that heavy duty spike and how to get it set up. Add your micro, your puck, and then your SS17. Everything is just like it should be up to this point in time. The difference comes when we decide that we're going to add this orange LZ sloper wire. And it's as simple as taking the loop that's at the top of this wire, putting it over the top ball of the SS-17, attaching the alligator clip to the top of our SS-17, and then figuring out the direction of your deployment of your wire. Of course, you would have thought through that before you set up your vertical antenna. So I'm going to go through the process here, and as I go through it, give you some tips along the way. As you're extending your wire to attach it either to a stake, a tree, or to the ground as you'll see me do, pay attention that it doesn't get caught in your hand. You can see I'm stressing the SS-17 pretty good here. That's my fault. I should have been paying more attention. And let's talk about that stress on the SS-17. That was one of the questions I got when I introduced this configuration in my Empass Light video. That was a prototype unit that came in at 4.9 ounces. Here, the production unit is coming in at 2.4 ounces, and that's even with an alligator clip that's double size of what the production units are shipping with today. And you can see from this photo here, there is no problem of stress on the SS-17 in its final configuration. This does not even stress your SS-17 s17 like the tactical delta loop does so this is more than an appropriate use of this wire with your ss17 telescoping antenna i did run out of yard before i ran out of wire so i wrapped the excess around the winder was going to go get a ground spike and i thought i have a ground spike it's my winder stick it in my soft soil i did it it worked you can see this gently slopes up to the top of the SS-17. And even with that flag blowing in the breeze, that flagpole, that portamast is 20 feet tall. I normally have a wire on it going back to my shack reference antenna. You can see my flag blowing and that SS-17 having no trouble whatsoever keeping this thin lightweight wire in the air. Let's talk more about why. Why would you want something like this? Well, it just creates a great deal of versatility to a tool you already have. If you already own an SS-17 and a Cha Hybrid Micro or Mini, you own the Empass Light Kit. This opens up a whole new avenue of operating uh, capabilities to you. This gives you a lower takeoff angle, giving you greater opportunity for DX communication. And this increases your bandwidth, giving you the opportunity to be effective across a wider range of frequencies. For me, me specifically going for the Empass light on 40 meters, I felt like this gave me a better opportunity to be more effective in my operations. Let's just confirm if that's so. And exactly what would you have expected from 7.200? I'm just showing the quality of my waterfall. I struggle with 40 meters and down because I have such a small lot here in the HOA. I can't get up a sufficient antenna. I did pretty good here tonight. I didn't have any POTA to chase and therefore I had to go over to FT8. FT8 is new to me, just learned it this week. I think I got it right, but after about 15 minutes of calling CQ, I was able to close out a couple of contacts. And again, I'm new to PSK 
Reporter and uh, looking at FT8. So I think um, the, the, the smaller dots, uh, balloons, those are the ones where I'm hearing these stations and then the ones that have a larger uh, balloon message indicating a number of minutes ago, those are the stations that are hearing me. If I'm not right about that, I'm sure somebody will definitely correct me in the comments below. Well, why not? Let's give 80 meters a try. After about five or six minutes calling CQ, I picked up a couple of QSOs on 80 meters and PSK reporter is showing I'm hearing plenty of stations and several stations are also hearing me. I don't know if this is phenomenal performance over this short period of time. Again, I'm new to FT8, but it's at least demonstrating that I'm getting out and I'm hearing. If you are going to use this configuration, pay close attention to the wire. Through my multiple setups here, I've learned the best way to wrap this is the over under or the figure eight methodology with the ending being the alligator clip. And then as you pull it off the winder, it just comes off without getting tangled because the wire is very lightweight. Of course, it's more susceptible to tangle. Pay attention to that. And if you use my method, you're going to be in pretty good shape. I do want to mention one more item about why this is really a great add-on to your Empass light. You know, it's not just getting a more broadbanded antenna and getting a better takeoff angle for DX communication. Think about the fact that if you're out operating and you're able to get your antenna vertical, but you don't have anything else to put and hang a wire on, this SS-17 becomes your mast, so you get a great deal of antenna improved performance, expanded performance without the need to have any secondary mast. I think that's one of the greatest benefits of this setup. Let's get some snapshots on SWR. Keeping in mind my antenna is attached to a Cha Hybrid Micro, and the intention there is to give you a more broadbanded performance with SWR that doesn't need to be tuned or just needs a touch up. And you could operate on all bands here with the exception of 40 meters, you would need to hit that tuner. FT8 is a new tool in the toolbox, but Whisper is something I've been using for a number of months. I'll use it to understand how propagation is working at any given point in time, how well a single antenna is being heard, or how well two identical antennas with one variation would compare to each other. So here we have some pretty significant and impressive Whisper maps. I did not specifically look at 15 through 12 only because I'm running this Whisper transmitter through the night. I live in a homeowners association and I frequently run through the night when a new antenna that I set up can't possibly be seen. And that'll of course influence what bands are best working for me. Do I think this is a great addition to the kit? I think the question answers itself. One wire winder, lightweight, small cube, and just an in incredible amount of enhanced performance opportunity in your Potosota MCOM Backyard Portable. Yeah, it's, it's a good piece of gear. I hope you found this useful, friends. I'll talk to you soon. 73.